a remotely controlled precise analog wall clock like that one from IKEA is a cool thing. Today we will build our own remote control for such analog and digital clocks. All we need is a Raspberry Pi and a few electronic components. And we will learn something about resonance frequencies, capacitors and ferrite antennas. Let's hack! Let's see YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. As usual, the warning up front. Be aware that what we do today can be illegal in some countries, because we will free a tiny amount of RF energy into the air. In this video we will learn how radio controlled clocks work. We will build a ferrite antenna for receiving and transmitting time signals. We will test and optimize it. We will install software on our Raspberry Pi to create signals for the European, the UK, the US and the Japanese frequency standards. In the end I should have precise time in my lab, even if it is in the basement. I like my analog IKEA wall clock in the lab. In the past, from time to time, probably when it got weak signals, it adjusted itself to a wrong time. An absolute no-go. Most people assume that not to be punctual might be the biggest catastrophe in the life of a Swiss. This is the reason for that project. First a short introduction on how these radio controlled clocks work. Atomic clocks create extremely precise time signals which are transmitted on very low frequencies with high power from the following locations. DCF77 from Frankfurt, Germany on 77.5 kHz with an output power of 50 kW. WWVB from Fort Collins, Colorado on 60 kHz with an output power of 70 kW. MSF from Anthorn, England. And two stations in Japan. They transmit a signal on 40 and one signal on 60 kHz. All these stations have atomic clocks on site, usually more than one for backup reasons. Their signals deviate only seconds in millions of years. Who uses these signals? You find a lot of different users from businesses like railways to families in their homes. Some cars even have built-in radio-controlled clocks. And Junghans still builds wristwatches which are using these signals to get precise time. They are super handy because you do not have to care about daylight saving or winter time. How does the system work? 60 or 77.5 kHz are very low frequencies. But the reach of such signals is enormous. DCF77, for example, can be heard in a range of around 1500 km around the transmitter. These waves travel differently during day and night because their transmission is influenced by solar activities. Usually the range is bigger at night. That is why you cannot always trust to get a signal and these clocks have an internal quartz clock which is only synchronized when a reliable signal is available. The transmission scheme is simple. Every second they transmit a shorter or longer signal. The duration of these beeps contains the time and date information. The clocks only have to decode and display it. If we want to build our own remote control, we have to produce exactly the same signal. You can imagine that the signal, when it reaches our clocks, is very weak. This is why these receivers are extremely sensitive and narrow band. If the frequency of the transmitter is only off by a few 100 Hz, it will no more work. So our transmitter has to produce a precise and stable frequency. Fortunately, its output power can be very low. Enough theory. Let's build the transmitter. Here I have a couple of clocks. 
This one is from IKEA and that one from Brown even covers all transmission standards mentioned before. If you do not own such a clock, it is easy to get one from AliExpress. You can choose which standard you prefer. And here I have a module with an antenna to do some testing. The antenna looks quite different from the aerial on, for example, your FM radio. It is a coil wound on a ferrite rod. This kind of antennas was used for decades in all FM radios. Antennas work best if they resonate on the receiving or transmitting frequency. For today's video, I use the 77.5 kHz of DCF77. But you can use the same rules to build one for 60 kHz. First, I wound 200 windings of 0.3 mm enameled copper wire on the ferrite and sealed it with a heat shrink tube. You also can use hot glue for that purpose, because we can use hot glue for nearly everything. Why 200 windings and why 0.3 mm? Because I had this size available and because it got boring after winding this number of turns. You can take it as an example. Or you purchase a ready-made receiving module and cut off the antenna. Next we have to know its impedance. For that I use my trusted transistor tester, which not only tests transistors. If you buy the right one, it also measures inductance. I measure around 4.4 millihenry. Why do I need to know? Because this formula calculates the resonance frequency and we want to know which capacitor is necessary to get a frequency of 77.5 kHz. The capacitor we need is 0.9 nanofarad. Because we do not get capacitors for each value, I use a trick. I select one which is close to the value I need. Of course, with the same transistor tester. Now our antenna should be OK and we can test it. This step is not necessary if you are sure you did select the right parts. I show it because otherwise maybe you would not believe what I told you. The easiest way to do this test is to use a spectrum analyzer with a tracking generator. Unfortunately, this is also the most expensive way. One test setup is to connect the capacitor and the antenna coil in series and attach a resistor to it. The tracking generator emits a signal on a particular frequency and the spectrum analyzer displays the amount of power it detects. If we now sweep the frequency from let's say 50 to 100 kHz, we see the dip where the antenna and the capacitor resonate. If you know a better test setup, please put it into the comments. You can do the same thing with a cheap frequency generator and your oscilloscope. Just connect the frequency generator instead of the tracking generator and the oscilloscope instead of the spectrum analyzer. Now you have to change the frequency manually and you see the dip on your oscilloscope and can read the frequency where the minimum occurs. Now we have our antenna ready. Let's have a look at the GitHub of Henner Seller, the creator of the software to produce the signals. He uses GPIO4 to create a fixed frequency and GPIO17 to amplitude modulate the signal, which means basically to switch it on and off. He suggests using these resistors and only a few turns of cable. His use case was only to synchronize his wristwatch. If we connect our antenna instead of this cable to the resistors, we see this signal. But does it work? Let's use this DCF77 module to see if we can decode the signal. You see the transmitted signal in green and the decoded one in yellow. Yes, it works. Of course, the reach is only a few centimeters, not 1500 kilometers like the transmitter in Frankfurt, but still sufficient if you place the antenna close enough to your clock. I do not like to connect a coil to a GPIO of my valuable Raspberry. 
This is why I connect a 2222A general purpose NPN transistor between the resistors and the antenna. Please do not increase the supply voltage of the transistor to more than 3.3 volts as this will increase the transmitted power and therefore the reach of the signal. Now we install the software with these commands and start our remote controller. And really, after a few minutes, the date and time are fully transmitted and our clock adjusts itself. The adjusting of the digital clocks is nothing special. The analog IKEA wall clock, however, moves the hands as if by magic. To show you the signal, I use a second ferrite rod connected to my spectrum analyzer. We clearly see the 77.5 kHz signal. It is quite weak if you compare it with the noise. With peak hold, we see it a little better. If I select, for example, the US transmitting standard at 60 kHz, the signal is much weaker. Clearly a sign that our antenna is not matched to that frequency. Nevertheless, the brown clock synchronizes even this weak signal. These receivers are very, very sensitive. Summarized, I solved a long time problem in my lab and have now a precise and reliable wall clock. We learned that our transistor tester could measure more than only transistors. We dimensioned and built a resonant ferrite antenna for 77.5 kHz. We installed Henner's software on our Raspberry, connected the antenna and got a decent signal for my IKEA clock. If you watch my Instructable, you even find instructions on starting the remote controller every time the Raspberry starts. And because this brown clock can be adjusted to all transmit standards, I was also capable of testing the US and UK signal. It works too. Only the Japanese signal seems not to work. But I'm sure Henner will solve this issue. I still have to see how the remote control behaves when the time changes to winter time in October. I hope it will adjust my clock automatically. Otherwise, I will have to ask Henner for a favor. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.